Hey guys, this is Kendra with Kendra All for Him Ministries, and um, I just wanted to take some time this morning and release and share a word with you um, that it's dear to my heart. And um, it talks about worship and what really happens when we worship. I recently got invited to um, be a clinician at a gospel choir event, and um, they brought all these amazing clinicians in, and I had the opportunity to speak about what really happens when we worship. And so I was taking time with the Lord before this happens, um, I have a history of worship. I've been doing worship for over about, oh gosh, 28 years now, and leading worship and participating in worship teams. And so worship is very, very near and dear to my heart. So I was just, you know, praying like, God, what is something fresh and new that I can bring to the table about what happens when we begin to worship you? And how can I explain um, what happens as we enter into his presence. And I love and I'm passionate about ushering people into the presence of the Lord through worship. And um, sometimes it's hard to put to words what what happens in that moment and what happens is you begin to worship God and you just feel the atmosphere shift and there's this blanket that comes over the room that begins to change people and, and God begins to enter in the room and do things that we could never, um, <laughs> you know, make happen without the presence of the Holy Spirit. And so I just want to share from my heart. Um, and I want to try and bring some scripture into it. I want to give you a little bit of testimony. But um, what was passionate on my heart as I prayed about this is like, my question to Lord was like, what really happens when we praise and worship you, Lord? And, and um, so let me just pray. So Holy Spirit, I thank you that you're here right now that you're with us. God, I ask for um, that you would just use me and speak through me right now, God, that you would communicate your heart and your intention for worship and that um, we would grasp it and that we would um, just come out of this time with a deeper revelation of who you are and in the intimacy that comes as we surrender ourselves to um, press into worship with you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So I always like to go back to like, what's the definition? And then we we'll pop it into scripture. So when you look at the definition of um, worship, really it's an ascribe where they, it's like ascribing or um, turning attention to something that's worthy or someone that's worthy of, um, of praise. Um, but it's a matter of the heart. <clears throat> it must be felt. Um, it can be ritualistic and it can't just be an, um, an external going through the motions. That's what the definition would be. And it says that true worship is a heartfelt expression of love, adoration, adoration, uh, fascination, wonder, and it's a celebration. And so it's something that happens in your heart and your soul. And then when you begin to praise God for who he is and you begin to thank him for what he's done. Now, I think we've all encountered worship in one form of another, whether you've been in a church, um, service, um, worshiping in your car. I love it when you're driving down the street and you're like, see people like going for it in their cars um, and they're, <laughs> who knows what they're listening to, but they're, they're jamming out, right? Um, but music has always been a part of my life. And um, I need to share with you a little piece of my history because I grew up, um, I knew as a little girl that were, that music was something that um, just changed. It changed. It just changed me. And um, so I went from a background of growing up in the Catholic church where we sang hymnals and, and out of the books and I could recite everything to where I can't, I've come through this journey over the last um, 30 years of falling deeply in love with God. And so worship went from a point of being a religion to um, this intimate relationship where I have this heart engaged, a spiritual engagement with, um, with God. And, and pressing into worship is oh, just this intimacy with Papa God above. And so um, my heart's cry is constantly, I'm longing for more of Jesus. And when um, we get to this position of worship and um, and it can be through music, it can be through your work, it can be through different forms, all different things. In fact, I always tell my teams, worship begins the moment that you put your feet on the ground in the morning. And you make a choice to choose to live your life out as a form of worship unto God. But music is a, a thing that changes us. And I want to speak to that because um, I want to take us back to scripture and just bring what I think is some foundation to where that comes from. And so... Um, so I want to go back to Genesis, and I, I think it's funny as you study all of scripture, 
it always takes you back to Genesis. And I laugh about that because you, you begin to study. It's like, ah, back to Genesis in the beginning. <laughs> so let's go back to Genesis 1. And um, it says, okay, so Genesis 1 says, in the beginning, and then God spoke. Okay, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump through Genesis a little bit because I want to get to the meat of what I want you to get, what the download was for me. But I got to start you in Genesis to get you to that point. So, um, as in the beginning, like it says that the earth was hovering, everything in all the masses were hovering, but then in the beginning, God spoke. And the moment he spoke, um, everything began to come into formation. Okay. And it says, um, that he created the heavens and the earth. He separated the water from the land. So all throughout the first 31 chapters of the Bible, it's talking about God speaking things into existence. It says he um, created the animals. He created the three creatures, everything. He brings everything into creation by speaking. And then what happens is God releases a sound wave and everything comes into formation. Everything that God spoke came into order. And so when we begin to worship, we're releasing the sound and, um, and, and sound is powerful because it, it never stops until it comes into formation. And so in Genesis 1, let's just keep coming through it because I could go back to that just alone. But I'm going to um, try and stay focused to what I want to share with you. So in Genesis 1, 26, then God says, um, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. Now, it's interesting. God didn't say, let me make man. He said, let me make human beings. And then he says, in our image, it's not in my image. He says, let, it, let, it, let me create him in our image to be like us. Well, that's not singular, it's plural. And so from the very beginning, God is speaking to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, um, the three in one. And so, um, so God has created heaven and earth, all the cre creation, and now we have Adam. Okay. So here's Adam, and then if we go kind of fast forward to Genesis 2 and verse 8, God starts to talk about how he creates the creation of guard, the Garden of Eden for Adam to oversee, right? So Adam gets to take dominion over the garden, and here's this beautiful garden, and everything's in it. Um, but in verse 16 of chapter 2, he says, um, but the Lord warned Adam. He says, you may freely eat the fruit of every tree in the garden, except for the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And if you eat its fruit, you are sure to die. Now, this is what fascinates me. Sometimes when you go look at scripture, I miss stuff. And so the more and more I go back looking over scripture and reading it, um, I have those aha moments. And this is one of those aha moments because it wasn't until verse 18 in chapter two that God actually creates Eve to come alongside of Adam. So, God creates the garden, puts Adam in there, tells him, don't eat from the tree of, um, of the knowledge and good of evil. And then he creates Eve. And as you, can, as you know, the story goes that um, you have these two in this garden. Now, I got to take you back. Think about this amazing place that was just created for these two. It's um, plush and green and talks about the rivers that would flow. In fact, it talks about rivers of gold. And as a little girl, I used to always hear people talk about the, you know, the streets of gold in heaven. And when I would read, oh my gosh, there's about the gold. Um, but it's, it's beautiful. It's perfect. And can you imagine um, Adam and Eve are in this garden. They're naked. They're totally vulnerable. There was... I mean, 100% intimacy with Jesus. Now, I always, I think of it this way, like if you took a piece of duct tape and you stuck them together, there's not, it's not easy to separate those, right? Like you're gonna, it, like it's very hard to separate when you put duct tape together. And that was the intimacy between Adam and Eve and God. There was no separation. They were completely vulnerable. They were, um, they were united. And can you imagine Adam and Eve like walking around the garden and just worshiping God? Like it had to have invoked praise beyond, um, like they had to have been this posture of constantly like, wow, God, you're so incredible. Look at the, look at the colors, look at the beauty, look at the, 
you're magnificent. How did you create this? Oh my gosh. I mean, could you just imagine them constantly being wowed and to think, man, God, you created this all for me. You created this all for us. Like we get to, we have dominion over all of this and this constant praise that had to happen. And then we know that in Genesis three, that we encounter the fall. Now, complete intimacy, no separation, total vulnerability. Here they are. And then um, Eve is deceived, obviously we know, by evil, and, and she eats from the tree. Now, I, I got to go back and study because it'd be interesting to know from point A to point B because I'm such a, a, a thinker that way of at what point did Adam not clearly communicate to Eve, don't touch the tree? Because <laughs> it, it came secondhand. You got to think of it that way. It came secondhand to her. And so the word wasn't spoken to her. It was related to her. And I, and okay, I'm just going to say this. I think this is one of those nuggets of the power of you being in prayer and being led by the Holy Spirit because divine intervention from the Holy Spirit, divine intervention from God is so powerful. And I can share this message with you, but you can go and you can go and study like what is worship to you and God's going to give you downloads and it's going to resonate so much deeper than me sharing what I have for you. Although I know it's powerful because I know it's from the Lord, but think about getting that download. God, God spoke it to Adam, but she heard it from, from Adam. She didn't hear the direct commandment from, from God. So I'm going to leave that where it is. Cause I'd love to go dig into that even more myself, but so here they are. So Eve takes and eats from the tree of knowledge and immediately there's deception happening, right? Um, God comes and says, what have you done? And Adam's like, she did it. No, he did it. it was a lot of pointing of fingers, but ultimately the fall happens. Okay. And in that fall, the enemy's intention was complete separation. Cause think about it. When he, when, when the enemy, when Lucifer made a choice, to um to be um just well he he had pride right he chose pride he chose arrogance he chose to believe that he was better than god and there immediately created that separation the whole intention of the enemy is for you to be in the same place that he's been since the beginning in this place of separation god separated him and so now his plan is to come and create separation in absolutely every relationship and every encounter we might have with the lord because in the separation you're in the same misery as him and, and god wants us to be in perfect unity so the fall comes um the separation happens but here's the crazy thing um Eve had the information from her, from Adam, but she made a choice. She had a choice not to eat the fruit, but she made a choice. And then her choice to eat from the tree of, um, of, uh, 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 in the tree, ultimately it created this, in, this separation of, for her intimacy of God, right? Okay, so, um, so this is kind of, I had to give you through all that so I can kind of like get you to the nugget of this so as i was praying about that i'm like man Lord, there's this place where we were so close to you and we're so far apart and and so worship is this constant journey of us getting back to this place where there's no gap there's no space between us and god and that's what it is for me as you begin as you i, I have this i've worked with amazing teams and and sometimes you just can't put words to what's happening, but we begin to, to celebrate God. And then we come to this place of entering into this worship where you can literally feel heaven invading earth. And that's what it is, is our hearts and our spirits, especially in corporate worship, coming unity and community and humility. We begin to um, encounter this, 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 this position where the gap between us and heaven is being diminished. Does that make sense? And um, so we, so we begin to step into this posture of worship. We come in the form of praise. So think about your own services or think about the time when you come and you're praying and you're celebrating God. We're remembering who Jesus did, is, what he did for us, who God is, um, who he is to us. And then I know for us, we would transfer into this or transition into this posture of um, like just our eyes being turned back to him and returning to our first love, like totally being reconnected in intimacy to our creator. And as we turn our eyes to him and we just begin to, to worship him, 
um, the veil becomes thin and we begin to step in because we, we've begun to come back to this perfect unity that was once ours in the very beginning. Now here's a crazy thing. True intimacy takes consent from two parties. Your yes and his yes. And it's a coming together. And we know that God has given us free will. And so Bible says that as we draw closer to him, he draws closer to us. And so it starts with us. It comes with us like surrendering, surrendering ourselves and, and putting ourselves in a posture of being able to, um, to step into this intimacy with Jesus. And, you know, oh my gosh, so many amazing stories over the years of doing worship. And um, I find it so fascinating to watch different atmospheres, like um, some places will go and people are like, they're ready to be like, they're jumping in and they're going to engage in worship. And, and then there's other places where I go and they're like, yeah, go ahead, bring it on, see what you can do, <laughs> you know, and, and uh, there's this total resistance and, and, uh, and I, I love that because I embrace it and I am, I don't take it as a challenge, but I just say, God, like, Holy Spirit, have your way. Like, these are your people. And the enemy has intended to create this massive separation. So um, we're going to press in. We're going to press in. And I'm going to chase after you. I'm chasing after an encounter with you. I'm going to worship until the veil is thin and these people encounter you. And so, um, but it is interesting. So um, I kind of concluded that comes down to like really three tangible things. And gosh, worship is so huge. There could be so many things. But um, <clears throat> worship, it's, it's a physical action of surrender. There's a really funny video out on YouTube. Oh, gosh. And I just came across it actually yesterday or this morning. And um, it's this comedian who's a Christian comedian. And he's talking about the different forms of worship. And, you know, where hands are down to your side. And then you kind of get the TV hold. And, 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 and I remember, like, the first times even for myself, like, getting to this position where I could even, like, raise my hands. And then this place of being completely surrendered. And, and so I know, personally, I remember that, oh, is anybody looking? Or is anybody around me? And you know, can I speak some truth? Nobody cares what you're doing. <laughs> They're more worried about themselves than they are you. And when I got to this position of, as a young, young worshiper and getting my hands into a place of just a posture of receiving, I remember like this oh, lift coming off of me and raising my hands and this freedom that happened. And what it is, it's like, you're just saying, here I am, God. And, and then you're just complete surrender. And so it's a physical action of surrender that brings us into repentance of a heart of being like remind, being reminded that we have been forgiven. And as we surrender to ourselves, what we're doing is we're putting God back as Lord over our lives, which is where he belongs. You know, we so quickly can put little things in a posture or a position that they don't belong. And so as we come into worship, it's a, it's a reminder of, God, you're Lord over my life. I, I give this back to you. I'm surrendering this to you. And I heard a worship leader say one time, you always want to have your hand in a posture of this because you're constantly receiving. And I'm like, okay, well, that makes sense. But there's a point where we put our hands away from us in a posture of, I, I, I give it all away. I, I'm, I'm letting go and I'm letting you be Lord of my life. So when you look at Second Chronicles um, 2022, 20, it says, um, when they lifted up their hands and began to sing praises to God, it sent ambushes up against their enemies. That's powerful. As they began to surrender. So really what you're doing is you're saying, God, you're Lord over my life. And the Bible says that God always goes before us. He always fights our battles. But you're surrendering and saying, you be Lord. You go before me. And, the, and, and I love it that, um, that God goes for you and he's, he wins. He wins every time. So, um, so surrender. <laughs> it's a physical action of surrender. Then it's a heart posture of repentance. It brings us back to our first um, love, to this intimate connection of our spirits and wholeness. Um, Lamentations 340 says, in, um, and I actually have a little note here that I'm reading off of because I want to get these scriptures right. It says, instead, let us test and examine our ways. Let us turn back to the Lord. Let us lift our hearts and hands to God in heaven and say, we have sinned and rebelled and you have not forget, forgotten us. Um, 
and, and really it's just a place of coming in and examining ourselves in worship. And I, I know there's so many times, um, even as a worship leader, man, we're just all real. We're just all a hot mess. And I would always tell my team, we would have this time before we would go out on the platform and, and we would just pray. We would just say, is there anything we just need to lay before the Lord and, and just give over to him so that we're walking out um, just in this complete posture of surrender um, and, and just really examining ourselves. And then I would anoint our team before we walk on the platform. And it wasn't a place to bring us into a place of shame and condemnation, but it was to be mindful and just to say, God, I, I just surrender. And, and, I, and I am weak, but you are strong. And forgive me, you know, please put me, uh, please forgive me. And I, I just want to be in this place of, I don't want anything to hinder me from coming into your presence and coming into um, this place where I can be healed and whole. Because, you know, like I said, just before I even sh shared that, it's like, we're all a hot mess. We just got to admit it. Uh, there's not anybody that's got it all together. And if we think we do, we're deceived. So I'm just saying, <laughs> but, um, okay. Number three, let's get back to this. So I don't get dis distracted. Um, the other thing that happens in worship is that it's a complete surrender in our spirit to say, Lord, have your way. And, um, so when we do that, um, not as only physical, it's also in our heart to say, Lord, examine my heart. Where am I um, holding on to things or what do I need to be released? And then it's into your spirit to say, Holy Spirit, have your way. Connect with my spirit, have your way. Um, and we know that we, that the Holy Spirit resides in us, that we have a habitation of the Holy Spirit. Um, but it's a surrender in our spirit to say, Lord, have your way. And then we begin to encounter heaven on earth and God draws us closer and the veil is thinner. And out of that point, um, usually I love the point. We just get to a point where you're wrecked and you um, are just encountering the power and the glory of, of heaven. So in Romans 12, one, um, it kind of, as we begin to worship, we become um, just a living sacrifice unto God. It says, and dear sisters and brothers, plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done with you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find accessible. And this truly is a way to worship him. And so when we live by the spirit and not by the flesh, when we partner with what heaven is doing and we surrender in worship and we just say, come Holy Spirit, have your way. What happens in ourselves um, as worship leaders, as worship teams, what we usher into the room is an atmosphere where the Holy Spirit has a habitation and the sick are healed, the dead in spirit come back to life, strongholds are broken in the name of Jesus, and new hope and life are restored to the walking dead. I have to share with you um, real quick in closing, I was leading worship one um, weekend and um, we, I felt like we were with the team, we we're at this place of like this incredible, um, it was almost like this breakthrough was coming and it had been, it had, it's kind of been coming for a while, coming for a while and we were leading worship, I was leading worship and we were um, towards the end of the set and a lot of times I would invite people to come to the altar at some point where the Holy Spirit would lead or just say, you know, um, come and meet him in the, in the midst or, you know, we knew he was everywhere, but that the physical action of stepping forward, there's just something in, in that action, like I said. And I hadn't mentioned anything this day and this, um, I had my eyes closed and I opened and, and noticed this woman to my right and she was on the floor. Um, as she looked up, she was just weeping. And I had, she had caught my attention. And so she was standing up and sitting down and standing up and sitting down and just like, I was like, there's obviously something happening there. And so after the worship service, I, I went over and I said, Hey, I, I noticed that you had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. I, I noticed the Lord and you had an encounter with the Lord. And, and um, will you share with me what happened? And she said, as you were worshiping, um, she said, I heard the Lord say to me, draw to me, come to me. Um, and she said, so I just started walking forward and she said, I could not bend at the knees. And as I came, the closer I came to the platform, um, um, he said, she said, 
um, I could feel my knees on fire. And then all of a sudden I heard him say kneel. And she said, I knew in my head I couldn't kneel, but she said, I just kneeled down. And she said, and then I could, she said, I couldn't believe I could do it. So I stood back up and she said, and then I would sit down and stand back up and I'd sit down and stand back up because God had radically healed her of years of the inability to sit down and get on her knees and get back up. And so um, that's just encouraging. So I just want to encourage you, of course, um, when God does stuff like that, you just, you, I, I don't know, I'm always just blasted. He always wows me and amazes me. But I, I know that that's a heart's father is that we would come into wholeness and we would come into healing mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. And, um, and I think what it takes is us just taking the first step. It takes us coming in and pressing into him. It takes us surrendering ourselves and pressing into what God has. And ultimately, I want you to get, I want, what I want you to take away is that as you begin to worship, we ultimately are drawing ourselves back to our first love which is powerful heaven invades earth the veil becomes thin and people get to encounter the presence of god so um let me leave you with this jesus paid a price that we could all walk in the fullness of him gosh you guys it was a costly price for your freedom and so how can we not but live a life of worship with our whole body with our with our spirit with our body with our mind and um, I just want to challenge you, you know, I'm a journaler. I always challenge my teams to journal um, or to just take some time and really, really reflect. Like, where do you feel like um, you're being held back? Where is the enemy um, robbing you of an encounter with, uh, with, with God? Or um, maybe in your next worship service or just turn on your radio and or turn on some music and just be in the presence of God and worship him and listen, dance and raise your hands and clap. There's every single thing that you do in the form of worship um, creates a response from heaven because he's waiting for you. It says, as you draw closer to me, and here's the crazy thing. God says he gives us the choice, but he, it's our free will. We have to engage at first before he will come to us. Um, in the capacity of he will um, draw near to you as you draw near to, to, to him. So anyways, um, love you guys. I just wanted to share that with you. Um, like I said, in your journal, I want you just to examine yourself and, 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 and maybe um, take a risk. You know, I worked with an amazing pastor who always used to say that um, with little risk, there's little reward, but big risk, there's a big reward. And so risk is spelled F-A-I-T-H, step into your faith. Know that God is there seeing you. Um, he's waiting on you and he desires to have a deeper encounter with you where you have a deeper encounter with him. <laughs> so anyways, let me just pray. Father God, we thank you for your time. We thank you for your work. God, um, wow. Just the ability that we even have permission to enter into your presence, Father God. And so even as we, um, oh, Lord, as we um, just continue to walk out this journey called life, Lord, I thank you that you're just constantly realigning us to come back to our first love, that you're constantly giving us wisdom and insight that we would draw unto you, that we would drink deeply from your wells. And so, Father God, um, just thank you for the revelation that you are there in the midst of worship, that you're in this place of wanting to, um, to be with us. And, and so, Father God, um, I just pray as we, that we would become radical worshipers of you, that we would... Um, fixate our eyes on you and Holy Spirit I ask that you would just move on the hearts of your worshipers Lord I pray for physical mental emotional spiritual encounters healings radical transformations as um, as we just draw uh, and, and just turn our eyes back to you and draw back to our first love we love you Papa God we love you Papa God in the name of Jesus amen Bless you guys. So good spending time with you. Have an awesome week and I'll talk to you soon.